Hello and welcome back to Let's Con to Let's Cheat Pokemon Coliseum. We're continuing our journey to the sewers with our current team of Angered Magneton. Roll. Mantine, Crawfish, Metatite, and Croconaw. Now it said I have 15 Shadow Pokemon. But when I looked in the PC, this is how many I have. I'm going to show it to you right now. Wait. Oh yeah, the Thumb Sparse. Roll. That's why I have 15. Because this guy. See? I got 10 here. Right? Got 10 here. Plus 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep, 15. Well, like, actually, no. Wait, let me recount that. I have 10 in the PC. And 11, 12, 13, 14. So why does it say I have 15? Let me check my snag list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Wait. I have a Ms. Drevis. Let's do this real quick. Let's check the PC again. Maybe I miscounted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, the Ramoray. <laughs> I kept miscounting because Ramoray wasn't there. I had it in PC box two because it's such a weak Pokemon. Boy, do I feel like a shoe. So I think we crossed that bridge is Mirror B. Let's, let's see. Nope, it's a broken bridge. No, not a Brooklyn bridge. A broken bridge. The Brooklyn bridge is in New York. Evan. If you don't you know, spell his name the other way around, it's Tave. I don't know why, but it's Tave. It's not like Giddy Bird. I taught a tea. I did. I did taught a tea. And he has two Pokemon. Somebody's about to be purified. I know, I did the worst Tweety impression on the face of this planet. I used to do a lot better when I was younger. But, you know, age. And the, de the deepening of my voice. In fact, my voice is as deep as this if I saw water, so. But I'm not gonna do that. Because I think I just scared away anybody who was hoping to watch this video. Growl. Stop growling at me. I need my attack. It helps me to purify my Pokemon faster. Boom. Astonishing. Okay, that was a very bad pun. I was thinking about what to title the last episode. I'm gonna title it Lasagna Noodle. Why? Because I said it and now I can't stop saying it. Oh, did you see that? A good a good chunk of its um bar went down. That means it has a benefiting na nature. Yep. 
know, I'm going to theorize that man, most of mankind's power comes from having a, a Remoray attached to his flipper. Or fin or whatever. I think it's a flipper. No, it's actually called a wing. Pretty weird, huh? It's called a wing. Even though, um... Stingrays and Manta Rays don't fly, they don't have fins or flippers, they have wings. I think they're one of the few known species of fish in the world that don't have fins or flippers but wings. There's also a flying fish that has fins that de developed into flipper, um, into wings. And flying fish are pretty awesome to look at. Because they go flying out of the water and they flap their fins like they were actual wings. What's over here? Got a trainer there. And a trainer over here. Let's do this guy first. I need to score points with Murabi so I can get a promotion. Gee, dude, I didn't know you uh, leaned that way, Zalo. Chuck a card we read his name as Zalo. It's actually Zalo because it rhymes with Halo. It's a little light thing that swirls around your head. I forgot to switch. La 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 la. But well, it doesn't matter anyway. Because Rui's big creepy eyes have just decided that hey, that bird is a shadow Pokemon. Have you noticed that Master Ball has actually been moving up in the list? Yeah, I kind of move it up and down in the list from the more Pokeballs I have. Gook. <laughs> I used the Swab Blue also in my last playthrough of this game, right into its evolution of um, of Altaria. And let me tell you, that bird kicked butt until it got hit with Ice Beam. Then I was like, <laughs> why? Here's a funny. Here's another funny story. This morning. After I finished, no, this, early this afternoon, after I finished walking my dog, I um, I went over to the kitchen, right? I guess to give my dog water or something. I forgot what I did. And I glanced over at the um, my at, at Coco the cockatiel's cage, and I noticed he was nibbling on the newspaper that was placed on top of his cage. He's been nibbling at it for such a long while, though. He's actually nibbled off a bit of the edge. Ow. But yeah, Coco the cockatiel, he's, uh, he's my mom's second cockatiel since her first one. I think I'm going across the throat kind of thing. No, it passed away. I don't want to be cruel. That's, it sounds like a cruel joke, but trust me, it wasn't. She passed away, so now my mom got another cockatiel, a younger one, gender male. His name is Coco. There's two reasons why I chose the name Coco for him though. You know, she you know, could have named him whatever she wants. It's her bird. I chose Coco because there's two spellings to the word Coco. There's Coco as in coconut. And then there's Coco as in chocolate. And apparently, you know, I like coconuts because their shells can be used to make horseshoe, you know, to make the clip clopping noise that horses make when they're running around. And cocoa because I like chocolate. I like chocolate so much. I have Italian chocolate sitting here on the on my little shelf next to me under a swirly lollipop. You know, I like chocolate cake. I like chocolate chip cookies, chocolate ice cream, pretty much anything that is chocolate. He spit on my Pokemon. That's disgusting.
One thing I want to know is, how would the people in Fenex Stadium know I was going in with shadow Pokemon? I mean, they can't see the shadowy auras that are giving off Pokemon like Rui can, right? So how would the people in Fenex Coliseum, or Fenex Stadium, know that I had shadow Pokemon? I don't think they would have noticed. I think they, they just would have been like, um, hey, that Pokemon seems to be using some weird attack. What is Shadow Rush? Is that like a new undiscovered Pokemon move? OMG. I don't think they would have known what a Shadow Pokemon was. I'm not trying to say that the people in this game are idiots, besides the AI being stupid in battle. Alright, E, Conroy's it doesn't affect this Dreavus episode of Pokemon Coliseum. Hey. That's what Beldum's doing. See, I do a better um, impression of Beldum being uh, spinning out like that. Because I have a pudgy face and a dangly... And and, um, and the part of my chin um, kind of is kind of loose. So I can make that kind of noise. See? <laughs> Five consecutive hits. Ain't that something? Imagine if I had you. Good job, Don Sparks. I bit my tongue. Goodbye. Stop spitting on my Pokemon. Yeesh, I hate it when people spit on my Pokemon. I mean, just because Dunsparce is slow, I have to spit on him too. Disgusting. Looks like your bright future has just met a dark demise. All my hopes and dreams of getting a promotion. <laughs> oh, stop crying. I'm pretty sure you'll get your chance again later on. Okay, before I forget to switch Pokemon again. There we go. Due to the fact that Remorade is only level 20, I'm actually going to put it into the daycare and let the um, old lady there help me out with the, purif with the purifying process. Ryder Darren. You know his name is just Ryder Ryder with an extra D in it, right? Oops. Excuse that hiccup in the emulation. It happens every so often. Like Dolphin needs another update. I mean, so far it's been running smooth, but eh, another update wouldn't hurt it. Also, just get check this out. The one and only time a normal type Pokemon can do damage to a ghost type Pokemon is when it's a freaking shadow Pokemon. And watch it, you know, go into hyper mode. Just to prove me wrong. Because games love proving LPRs wrong. Yep. <laughs> you know, if the AI kind of keeps that up with ghost type moves. I think I might have a sequel to It Doesn't Affect Miss Dreavis. It doesn't affect Dunsparce. And I put like, you know, the word Dunsparce will be like in all big letters with like seven exclamation points and a one somewhere in there. No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Ow! Oh! Well, mad time lived a while. Yeah. Even if I do call it, if he gets hit with another, um, with another, uh, uh, nightshade, it, it's done. It is done. But hey, at least I got most of its bars down.
Oh, there you go. Well, I guess that wasn't gonna last very long. But hey, critical hit. Looks like I get to heal Mantine after all. No, 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 not potion. I mean, super potion. We yeah, hyper potion for this one. That coffee level 30. Um, I'm thinking. That I think I love. Between level 34 and 38, I'm gonna say, is when it learns um, self destruct and buy. Oh boy. Another fun fact about this game, I don't think I mentioned this um, at all. If I did, I might have mentioned it in the first episode, but um. Fun fact about this game, it handles shadow Pokemon differently from the main story. Like, there are shadow Pokemon in Colosseum and only in Colosseum. Now, I'm talking about GameCube here, not like in the handhelds. It's always shiny Pokemon in the handhelds. Well, you shut up. Anyway, this game handles shiny Pokemon drastically differently from, um, from the handhelds. See, let's say, this is from TCR, then uh, let's say you run into um, a Shadow Voltorb, right? And it's a shiny Pokemon. Rather than it being like blue on top and like uh, off white on the bottom, similar to a Great Ball being like blue on top and white on the bottom. In fact, the, the, the Voltorb will be dark blue on top, like, like a really deep dark blue on top, and a lighter shade of blue on the bottom. Wouldn't that be, ain't that something? See, what I'm trying to say is that if any shadow Pokemon happen to pop up in, in Colosseum here, instead of being, you know, um, you know, the standard shiny colors, they'll just be like really dark, a dark shade of shiny coloration. That dust bar is gonna faint even, uh, even though I'm gonna call it, it's gonna faint anyway, so. When it does faint, I'll just switch it out for um, Espeon. So I'm gonna take out that coughing faster because it's, uh, it's fudging with my accuracy. It's got always oh, gonna fart on me, so I'm not gonna do it. I like playing with my hair. It's a little thing I feel as a child. Everybody has something that they used to do in their childhood, you know? Everybody has a, a, a distinct habit that they used to do in their childhood. No! Uh, I was gonna use that on coffee and I double tap by accident. Oh well, mine goes out. Not, why, not who I wanted to take down because they were paralyzed, but eh. when you fudge up, you fudge up, right? This guy wasn't really necessary since he didn't have any shadow Pokemon. But he was in the way, so... I was on the water's about you, but nobody said, ever said anything about Lugia, so it's okay! 
Wow. Um, that's your job on the line there, buddy. Gee, everybody's gonna be that. You know, so you lost? You freaking lost? And you pull th strands of hair out of his afro in anger. I cannot believe you lost. Anyway, if you want to know how uh, Mirror B gets his hair to look like that or the big afro puff, he lets his hair grow really long, right? Until it's dragging on the floor kind of long. Then he has a, and then he goes to a hairstylist and they round his hair up constantly. Until they, until they get this ball shape and then press it to his head and make him wear a, uh, a hairnet, right? And while he's wearing that hairnet, you know, it's just to train his hair so it does, so it roots, so it reroots itself into his skull. And then, it, and then he grows it out long again, and they just keep repeating the process, uh, rolling it and rolling it and rolling it until he gets this big poke ball shaped afro on his head. And then they use hair color to spray his hair, one half of his hair red, the other half white. And they'll do it from root to tip. And if they do that, then he, um... Then that's how he gets his afro do. Keep in mind, the hairnet that he's wearing is actually taken off his head during this process. And they just keep uh, adding bigger and bigger hairnets to his hair until, you know, he doesn't need the hairnet anymore. And they use like tons of freaking sticky hair gels to hold it in place. Doing, doing, doing. Looks like man time, about ready for that pool for Kayshawn. The pool, the pool, pool for Kayshawn. You know, for a water poison type, you sure don't know if very many good moves. You like rapping or something? What are you, Eminem? Oh well, with that, with that, uh, with that rapper out of the fight, at least I don't have to worry about every turn being, uh, Mad Time got, really got hurt by rap, or uh, Dunspark got hurt by rap. It's very, very it happen constantly. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. When I get a, um, it doesn't affect Ms. Drevis too. It doesn't affect Dunspark because they apparently like to use ghost type moves on normal types in this game, as well as vice versa, a normal type to ghost type. It's like what? Please make me laugh. Actually, no, I, we're perfectly fine getting on this game. Hey, Cypher Peon! Ooh, I like the Cypher Peon music, though. Actually, believe it or not, this Cypher Peon music, this is actually evidential proof that you know you're in for a big fight later. I forgot to heal. Oh well. Take a look at the mad time real quick. Nearly there. Just barely. Dee -dee -doo. 
Lily, the rock grass Pokemon. You know, there's a lot of mispotential in that poor Pokemon. I mean, yeah, it's a unique type of being rock and grass and the only one with that typing. But yeah, I wish you could have made it more of a rock poison type. Ah well, can't have everything your way. This ain't Burger King, you know. There we go. I think that looks better than what was in um, XD. You know, it's more of an Aurora Beam than the one in XD. And <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I can totally see it happening right now. <laughs> it doesn't affect Dunn's paws. I think I'm going to call it um, I, I think I'm going to call it uh, Dunn's part. What hit me? <laughs> nah. Yo, man. We got hit with acid. We're tripping out, man. Dude, I feel it. I feel it. Yeah, I gotta heal. Both Pokemon are healing. Shut up! You know what, Jug remember when Jugger Conroy said in his um, LP for Pokemon Coliseum when he read out the moves of Walrein and that one of his moves was a track and he was like, who the heck is gonna fall in love with that thing? Guess what? Guess what happened? I have no attack, oh, that's why I'm switching. And his Pokemon um, XD playthrough, guess what he trained? He trained a Celio. No, he trained a, a Steel. And you want to know why? Because the attract had an effect.
You're a really stubborn one to go down. It's a dead end. Oh no. I wonder what she's training against, Melly. Actually, that's what, that's what a lot of people call my cousin. My cousin has a, a my cousin's name is Melissa. We often call her Melly for short. That medit that um not that it's like the uh, the dance bar. If that dunce bars was to be hiding up next to me on the very tip of its tail, I think it'll be just a little shorter than me. I'm only like 5 feet. That dunce bar is 4'11". So yeah. I mean, I know they talk about like, like average heights and everything, but yeah, I'm a 5 foot tall, 200 pound, 31 year old woman. Why are you using that? That's best used on ghost types. Stop growling at me! Take advantage of the fact that um, dust parts are slow, that's why. Which is a good strategy, actually. You take advantage of the slow Pokemon, you growl out all its attack power and everything, and then you can't really do anything to you. Everything about Zigzagoon is a zigzag. So he got zigzags on his head, got zigzags on his body. His mouth is a zigzag. It runs in a zigzag fashion. Everything is a zigzag with Zigzagoon. Even shakes off in a zigzag way. Even faints in a zigzag way. Its foot twitches in a zigzag way. Okay, no, it doesn't. And here's my noon. My noon is probably a Pokemon that runs in a straight line. So the joke is, is a, so here's a, a bit of a Warner Brothers joke put into its Pokedex entry. Linoons can only run in straight lines, you know, they can, no, they can only run in straight lines and they can do sharp turns, but they have problems running on gently curving roads. So, in, so I would like to see someone do a little animation of, li, of a Linoon running on a straight road that for all of a sudden has a jet to curve on it and it's over a ledge, okay, it's over a cliff like you see in the Warner Brothers cartoons. I wanna see that, I wanna see an animation of that happen. I think that will be comedy gold right there. I wish I can do animations like that but I'm best at just doing like drawings. That's it, I just draw. I don't, I don't do animations. I would like to see an animation of that, of a line running in a straight line, 
when suddenly a gently a gentle curve in the road happens and it just flies off the ledge. <laughs> Ow, my bad side. I got no attacks, I'm not doing damage. There we go. That ought to stop the little bastard. Sorry about staying quiet like that. I tend to get, like I said many episodes of before, I tend to get real quiet when I'm, in, when I'm deep in concentration. Also, I, I, I timed it right. Okay, I gotta get Meditai out of there. She's just headbutting the ever-loving Christ out of it. Actually, you know what? I'll switch it back for our dust part. Let's see if we can do this again. Nope, that didn't quite work. All she's using is hidden missile, growl, and headbutt.
It's like the AI only uses headbutt when they want to use growl. You know? Fun fact about Umbreon in Generation 2's Pokemon Stadium 2. For some odd reason, they think it might be a glitch in the programming, but for some odd reason, Umbreon tends to flash between its normal colors and, um, and its shiny colors. If you were to look it up in a model viewer, you would see what I mean. Zinc, carbos, protein, and iron. One of each. I think there's a place later on in the game where you can go to buy these. Oh, <laughs> I just don't remember where. I'm actually going to use this on... um. So, let's see, um, I already have a Psychic type, I'm going to use this on Espeon because, yeah, Espeon is, is soft on the defense. I'll use the Protein on, um, on Umbreon. I'm going to turn him into my physical tank. I'll use the Carbos on, um, on Mantine because he's, because this is my Pokemon. And the Zinc, um... I know what, I'll save the zinc for when I have um, my starter Pokemon. There. People might get mad at me for choosing to keep Umbreon on my team and all, but you know what? How would what they believe? I mean, Chugga Conroy, he does things his way and I do things my way. I'm not copying nobody. I do things my way. That's why it's called Let's Cheat Pokemon Coliseum. Not let's play, let's cheat. I think this, this is the path to um, your B. Yeah, this is okay because it's a more solid path going upward. Kind of see when you go up the stairs better. So yeah, I'm going to take a moment, I'm going to heal since the heal is right, right here. And I might call it a video, I might, and check a few things. And in the next episode, we'll take on Mira B. I'll do another save, let's check Pokemon storage real quick, yep. Got to save. Okay. So, I'll leave it on the screen. This is why I'm going to call it an episode, okay? Because I have to use the bathroom. <laughs> so, this is Meg Griffin signing off. Have a great and glorious afternoon or evening this time around. And I'll see you guys in the fight against Mira B. So, goodbye. <laughs>